everybody. Welcome to Table Talk. We're glad you're here on this. Well, for us, it's Monday. I don't know when you're going to be watching this, but um, it's been a couple weeks of cold and winter, and yet we are here. Becky, are you a winter or a summer person? I pretty much don't like to leave the house in January and February. Okay. I really have but to push. Here. I know, but I have to push myself. <laughs> Because in Florida, you don't oh, have yeah. wind like that's that. That's right. You have the Florida blood. Oh my goodness oh, gracious! Oh my goodness! I know. I have a friend who's like in Ohio this mm -hmm. week, and it's like desperately so scared of like the cold, and mm -hmm. he's like, "There's white stuff on the ground." But you know what I think about? Mm -hmm. In Florida, is the strawberry festival in February, and I always remember very seasonal that February is strawberry festival, and I try to get through February. Yeah, you can push right. through it. There you right. go. So I'm here with Pastor <laughs> Becky, if you didn't get that already, okay. and uh, we're going to talk about the message and uh, the start dreaming again and this idea of of um, hope mm -hmm. and how hope brings us is is really the key to bringing us through adversity. It doesn't necessarily change circumstances, mm -hmm. but um, helps with resilience and with the Joseph story and um, I don't know. It's it's funny when I've been reading that the, the whole story of Joseph, like as a whole, um, and then in Genesis, um, it really struck me about how it, it, with him, it's it's like there's one thing after another that happens, and and I don't know. A lot of times, I feel like we have like this perspective or this picture of like Bible characters as being like you know these people like they go through a hard time and then God rescues them and brings them out of the thing like. He went through like multiple things. I am sure there were times when he said things he shouldn't have said. I so. believe so. <laughs> yes, they were not recorded right. in that. So, right. but um, <clears throat> but I think like a lot of times with us, we can feel like okay, it's just one thing after another. Like when it rains, you know, people saying when it rains it pours. Um, you know, hit me while I'm down, that kind of thing, and and we tend to lose sight of. God's presence with us when for Joseph it was the opposite you know right. and how hope functioned so um I mean so, sitting in a prison you yeah. know what I'm saying how much more right after helpless, doing the right thing yeah after not doing it being on you I mean that right. has got to be the yeah. feeling of injustice the feeling of I just don't know how he turned to not hate you know what I'm saying yeah, because yeah, man things happen to you or people do things to you and you're like it changed me you know what I'm saying? Oh, and yet sure. for him, it was like, it may have changed him, but it didn't change him in a way that didn't mm -hmm. allow him to, the dreams to still move forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Becky, so just thinking about like your own life, mm -hmm. how has hope been that key to resilience? Like mm -hmm. how has hope really brought you through as a person of faith, but also just um, looking beyond what's immediately in front of you and even yeah. what others might present to you. Well, I was, I grew up in the church. Um, we went to church every Sunday and Wednesday. I mean, we were there. I lived there. I, uh, we didn't do too many school things. We could only have good friends that were at church. Okay. You know, so One church was people. everything. Like church was, life. was our life in my family like that. And um, when I, I honestly believed that God was already calling me then. I was already starting to do things, and I, I noticed, a lot of people noticed, you know, leadership and, you know, things like that. So, but, you know, I didn't take it serious. It was more like, yeah, yeah, you you all say that. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you all, oh, you could do pastor. <laughs> so, anyway, um, but I became pregnant at 16. And um, I don't think most people, um, younger people today, can understand the shame that you have to walk around with through the whole pregnancy. Wow. And I was told by a lawyer, I, I remember this like it was yesterday, and we were sitting in a lawyer's office, and I was giving guardianship to my parents for because um, I still lived with them, and that was the only way I could get health insurance for them is if they had okay. guardianship. So we did a legal guardianship, which never turned out to be anything other than just legal. Mm -hmm. So my parents never used it against me or anything like that. But I remember the lawyer looking at me and saying, you know, it's going to be really hard. You're never going to find anybody that wants wow. to be with you and a baby. Wow. And I just sat there. And of course, I hadn't, I had finished, I hadn't finished high school. 
but I was actually getting my GED, okay? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because I was pregnant. I, I left school. I actually had some other things with depression, and I was unable to be around people. And it was really weird. It was just strange. And back then, we didn't believe in depression medicine. Mm -hmm. We didn't believe in any of that stuff. So I pretty much thought my life was over. Uh -huh. I honestly believed that no matter what God had thought about, that I had destroyed it mm. somehow. And I did it to myself. But then there were things that happened to me that others did to me. And that was keeping me in the shame. You're not allowed to be happy about the baby coming. You're not allowed all this stuff. And it was turmoil. Wow. But the one thing that I realized is after listening to your sermon, that was true. And I can look back and say with 2020 vision, you know, right. hindsight, you do. that God was always with me. Hmm. And it was his presence that gave me hope. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's all I had. It, situation, there's no way the situation was right. There's no way out of that or change. I mean, and, and the guy, yeah. my, my boyfriend left me. I had no one. I, I didn't know what to do. And I had a baby, and I was 17 when he finally was born. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a difficult time in my life. And I think that when I look at back now, I think, God is so much bigger than you think he is. Mm, absolutely. He's so much bigger than you think. And I devote my, I, I love the Lord with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength. And I know that sometimes we limit ourselves, but I think God turns it around and makes it into something good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, right. I honestly believe that. And some of that's my positivity. Everyone gets sure. fun about that. Right. Right. <laughs> if you didn't get it, Becky is a... Very positive. positive person. It's one of her strengths. But that too. you know, the truth is, is that bad things happen to positive people too. Right. Or we do things that cause bad things, you know, just yeah, as sure. much. And yeah. Yeah, we make choices yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm 48. Mm -hmm. I have six children. I adopted two. Mm -hmm. You know, all, all the things I see how God let me be a part of. The right. dream he had. I'm in ministry. It took me 10 years of school. 10 years of service and That's school. A long time. <laughs> I had to raise kids and go to school and work at church. And mm. but that was what I just knew God. I just knew that was the way. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And even yeah. in that adversity, even when people try to stop me, I had a lot of problems with people saying, "Well, you're a woman, you can't do certain things." Mm -hmm. Now up north it's not as bad. So our people probably don't realize that sometimes in other places it's oh, sure. very shameful. Yeah. And so for me, I had adversity coming up. My, I mean, <laughs> I honestly believed that you couldn't be a woman could only be a children's pastor. So in my life, mm. I was never going to be a children's pastor. Mm. Because of that. Just because right. of that. It's <laughs> and look what God yeah. did. Right. Says, well, guess what? Guess what, Pastor Becky? That's what's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah. No, thank you for sharing that because I think I think so many times we hope in say a specific change of circumstances, mm -hmm. and that's where our hope rests rather than in God, like in a person. Um, and then when things don't change or it keeps this disappointment keeps coming or it keeps, Hey, somebody says something again, that kind of thing that can become almost like, oh, okay, well, you know, God didn't answer my prayers or well, and, you know, you know, you do me, things, you do things thing. because of that. So right. I got married oh, and yeah. I shouldn't have mm. to somebody I shouldn't have because I was trying to fix it instead of waiting on God. Mm. And I think that's where I learned faith. Faith is waiting Mm. And letting God act and you not act for him. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. It's not acting like I have to fix this. Making it happen. Right, making it happen. Yeah. Or correcting it. Or like correcting, yeah, correct sense. my, so, okay. yeah, correct my, yeah. like how do I correct my disappointment, like what I did, which I knew was wrong. But there is way to have in that either. God mm. uses, he, it's not about us correcting, it's about having faith that God is present in it. Mm -hmm. And for me, Looking back, knowing that God was with me the whole time, mm -hmm. 
for me yeah. is just confirmation. So my hindsight gives me way, way beautiful mm-hmm. vision of the past. And so for sure. And no matter what I've been, I mean, I've been through a divorce. I've been through all of those things. And some of it was not my making. Some of it was me honestly trying and thinking I was doing what God wanted me to do. Honestly, mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. Right. But in the end, I, I have to, I have to rely. I don't even know what the end of my future looks like because mm-hmm. I don't even try to guess anymore. And, and don't you think it's, it's so valuable that when, when we're facing a, a, a task, a um, adversity, a struggle in the, in the present, it's helpful, like, to look back and to look back at, yeah, mm-hmm. no, God was faithful in these like circumstances. I didn't choose these circumstances that were out of control mm-hmm. that were very, very painful and look how he's brought me through. So even if like, you know, even in Joseph's case, our case, even if we can't see him right now and don't have no idea what's going on, how this is going to turn out, I'm stuck in prison. I'm stuck in Egypt. Mm-hmm. Um, to know in the trust, if he did it, then he's going to continue to do it now. In some in some way, I, I think, don't know. How. I think hindsight we can use it for evil, right? Oh, for sure. You should yeah. have done this. You should have done right. that. And you can live in that. And regret. you can watch a video where people made snap decisions and and judge them right. perfectly, right? Yeah. But I like to look at hindsight as seeing God at work. Mm-hmm. So my hindsight, I try not to say like. I should have done this. I, I try to see where God is at work in it. Right. Because in spite of, right. to say, hey, I really blew right. it here, or hey, I decided right. for the wrong reasons. Right. And and yeah. I just I just don't believe that, that God just drops us <laughs> the first time we think we know what we're doing and we don't. You know yep. what I'm saying? It's a lot like our kids. I watch my kids do that. Mm-hmm. I watch my kids do things. I'm like, did you even yeah. think? Like, <laughs> I know. Right. You could have said it to me. But it's it's human. It's us being human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you look at the path of hope versus the path of despair. Like we do have a a choice in that. Mm -hmm. And of course there are other factors involved too. There's mental health things like, you know, we're not putting that aside completely here at all. Um, But in the, like, you know, in a general scheme of things, Mm -hmm. you know, when we are faced with adversity, like we have that choice and I don't know, but I've chosen despair before and it doesn't leave me anywhere good. And it doesn't help. It doesn't help the situation and it doesn't help moving forward. It doesn't help my relationships. Like if anything, moving forward in a hopeful path, even without knowing where it's going Mm -hmm. to say, Hey, you know what? My, my, I love what um, Paul says in Romans, Romans five, like hope does not disappoint. Mm -hmm. Like, and even if it's that, like for me, it's, it's like on a daily basis to do that, to say, Hey, you know, I'm choosing hope. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing hope today. I'm choosing to be hopeful um rather than ending in despair Mm -hmm. um because it is i think that is that is a choice to Mm -hmm. live into and you don't have to know where you're going you don't have to know how god is going to and yet there's all kinds of personalities that really need to know i feel bad i know (laughs) i feel bad because i feel like i'm okay with showing up and see what happens Mm -hmm. but cindy Earp who's the exact opposite of me, and she knows <laughs> it, and we Cindy. joke about it all the time, but she, if I was to say that to her, she would say, uh-uh, that doesn't happen mm-hmm. that way. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, some so of us even are our personalities. Like, a planner. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So some of us are, are just our personalities allow us to hit adversity differently, but it doesn't yeah. mean it's bad. It just means different. Right. You know? Right. And, and there is a sense of, like, you know, of, of letting go of the things that necessarily we right. want that, you know, that might be different for you than different for mm-hmm. me than different for Cindy or anyone else. But it's, it's letting go of those things to allow God to be God. And now I will tell you mm-hmm. that I do suffer from depression and I have, mm-hmm. and I have a chemical imbalance. And so I have to deal with a lot of those chemical things. And yeah. trust me, when I time. tell you, there are times I think hope is a chemical. I know, mm-hmm. I know it sounds crazy, but I think it's in a just, bit it is. I, I just feel the, like the sometimes, right, the yeah. science behind, I don't know how it works, but sometimes I, I feel like that's happened. But I have been in those pits of despair. Mm-hmm. And my only way out, which I know how to get out now, is I say, Lord, you have to act because I can't do squat now. Mm, wow. And I just sit and I stay and I wait. And the last time that happened, I was crying and I was, you know, it's really hard to be in that pit, especially if you don't know why you're there. 
You know what I'm saying? Especially when your body's pulling you into it. And I just had enough of it one day. And I just said, you're going to have to act. That's really good. I can't. Wow. And you know what happened? Immediately, I felt peace. I don't know where it came from. But immediately, I gave up. I said, that is it. You're going to have to act. I can't do anything about this. I can't take the right medicine. I can't do nothing, right? You're going to have to act. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. And he did. And he did just like that. And I think it's when we get to that point that understands that yeah. God needs to act in this, mm -hmm. not us. It's faith to believe that he will act. Yep, absolutely. And it takes that burden off. But I, I love how you put that, like, in those moments, mm -hmm. you just say, hey, you know what? God, you you're what else? Oh, can I, I can't do anything. It's 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 up to you, mm -hmm. and I'm depending on you in this. And that's happening. And I gotta tell yeah. you, each time when I start feeling like I'm going down, I remember those moments. Now God right. gives me memories of times how He helped me. Yeah. It helps me through that. I haven't had another episode in a little while. I keep hoping it's over. <laughs> but in those moments, I'm not afraid. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well. Oh, that's good stuff, Becky. Thank you. Thanks for sharing today. Oh, really good. appreciate it. And thanks for and thank you for being vulnerable too. Because I think when we hear each other's stories and even some, you know, yeah, events in the past, things mm -hmm. that you've been through, it's like, oh my gosh, you too. Yeah. Like, you know, I think it, there's it, a sense of let them it's know it's possible. It Just is. because somebody says something or you do something that may have changed your life for eighteen years but, or sure. changed your yes. whole scale life, maybe yeah. you, you know, whatever it is, God can use it. And make it seem like it was a good thing. I know it sounds crazy, Strange, yeah. But he makes things that are bad seem like they were good, and I don't know yeah. how he does That's that. God. That's God. I know that has God. to be. That has he to be darkness and turn right. And light. so I just right. I love seeing that. Yeah, me too. Me mm -hmm. too. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for joining us today. We are so glad yeah. that you're here for our little discussion conversation. And if you're facing something right now um please let us know we'd love to pray for you even just confidentially um you can or even encourage out. you and even just encourage yeah. you um and because we all have our we all have mm -hmm. stuff we all have been been through different things even though you know when we show up on sunday or see friends or whatever it can look like oh everything's fine everybody's doing well, well i do want to tell you one thing mm -hmm. i to tell you and i think this goes with what you're saying yeah when i became pregnant of course i felt very ostracized but my church gave me a baby shower. Mm. Like, I didn't know why, but we're not talking about a little baby shower. We're talking like gifts upon gifts upon gifts wow. upon gifts upon cards upon, I mean, I had three whole baby showers from three different churches that I had known or been to or stuff like oh that, that gosh. heard about and had all these baby showers. Wow. And when I think back to that, I think it's not hard for that. He at least was given, you know, it was something. It was okay. Yep. It was okay. Yep. Yep. And you too can be a source of encouragement. Yeah. In and so we adversity. can. And it's it's we giving. Can, it's telling people that it's possible. Amen. It's possible. Good word, Pastor hmm? Becky. Thank you. Great. Well, you guys have a great week, and we'll see you. On Sunday, we're going to continue our mm -hmm. series and story about Joseph and um, enter into a time when things start looking up, but um, but also our role. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. our role in dreams and how dreams come to fruition. So have a great week. Stay warm, yes. and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.